Okay, just, just talking about some of my experiences when I've played um, various players when I used to play professionally. Um, as you know now, the modern game is so much about power and getting first big hits in. And the majority of players sort of play with that sort of style, but there are still a few players around that, that probably actually don't hit the ball that hard, um, but can still cause problems. One of the, the most frustrating players that I've ever had to play against was a guy called Fabrice Santoro from France. Um, and I had the, uh, the chance to play him in a couple of the Junior Grand Slam tournaments that I played in. And um, he played double-handed both sides, which straight away was pretty tough because his disguise on, on balls and his, the way that he actually connected with tennis balls, whether or not he took one hand off, you didn't really know which hand he was going to take off. It was so difficult to actually anticipate what he was going to do. Um, if any of you know Fabrice Santoro, he's a similar age to me, but he's about half the size of me as well. So he was a very, very small, compact player that had very, very tricky uh, skills off of both sides. Not a particularly big serve at all, um, but had the ability to make you feel really vulnerable when you're playing because he gave you this pace that was just nothing to play off of, but not so slow that you could just really feel confident to hit it away. It was a real sort of um, pace that you would sort of really doubt yourself when you went to hit it. And he had a fantastic ability to be able to put balls into spaces where it felt very, very tricky just to be able to do something with the ball. So I can remember playing in the US Open Juniors against him and um, I was probably playing the best tennis that I played in that year um, and I saw the draw and I saw that I had to play him and I'd already played him that year earlier at Junior Wimbledon and I was actually quite relishing the chance to play him again because I felt really, really confident about my game and um, I thought, well, I can try and get a chance to get back on court with him and hopefully get the result that I wanted. Um, about 45 minutes after the match had started, I felt terrible about my game. I'd lost one and one, tried absolutely everything. Um, and the magician, as he's known, um, just managed to tune me up and spit me out again. So I'd try and serve and volley, which was one of my A-game tactics, of which the ball would keep coming back to me off the serve by my ankles. So he'd make me pick the ball up and I'd close the net off and then he'd just flick a lob over my head. Or if he returned the ball and I played a low volley and I didn't close the net off, he'd just pass me. And that was, that was sort of like the routine of the, that was the story of the match. If I tried to play from the back of the court, which is probably not my most um, positive way of playing, or my biggest strength, then I just felt that as the longer the rally was going on, the more and more I was getting into positions which would just be getting more and more out of position and just sort of delaying the inev inevitable of him just being able to put the ball past me or drop shot me or angle me off the court. So the reason why I'm talking about this is because I think it's really, really important to understand in tennis that that it's not just about hitting the ball hard, it's a lot more about trying to be accurate first, so the accuracy comes first, and then if you need to try and increase power in your game, or you want to try and increase power, that's fine, but, but it's understanding that you don't have to hit the ball hard to be effective, you can hit the ball softly, as long as you've got the ability to be able to move the ball around and be accurate and have the skills to do that, then, then hitting the ball at a, at a moderate pace can really be an effective uh, tactic to use.